Okay, it's time to reassemble this other DRZ400 fork. I already got one of them done. The parts here are laid out pretty much in the orientation that they all go together. Uh, for reassembly, we are adding a couple things to the mix here. Uh, for the parts, we're putting in this spacer to limit the stroke length. Uh, this is going to go inside the cartridge so that when the, um, when the piston comes to the top of the cartridge, it gets blocked this much closer from the on top. So it's a top out spacer limiting the stroke. Um, we're going to need some fork oil and I also made a tool here that is going to be uh, a drift to install the top bushing and the seals in the top of the fork. A uh, piece of Schedule 40 2 inch PVC pipe had to reduce the OD a little bit to let it fit in here. Um, the ID is just about perfect. I have a little bit of grease so that uh, we can lubricate the O-rings when they go back together. And that's about it. Let's get started. Everything that we have taken apart that has an O-ring, you want to uh, wipe out the O-ring groove as part of cleaning it before the O-ring goes back on, just to make sure that no grit stays in there and gives you a leak in the long run. So we have an O-ring on our top cap. Uh, we have an O-ring on the outside of the bottom plug that has our compression valve on it. Again, if you were doing a complete rebuild, uh, these would be new O-rings. There's also an O-ring on here that I've already put on. Um, but I know that's clean. And last but not least, there was an O-ring in this piece here that I hadn't pulled out. It was loose on the other fork, but this is now a different fork. So I'm going to just grab a rag and wipe this out. Wipe out the o-ring groove from each side. Nice and squeaky clean, and since he's been in the bottom of the fork leg, we're just gonna make sure we wipe out the bottom of that. All right. So now he's ready to go back together too. Bottom and cone. Bottoming cone is going to go in the bottom of the tube because that's the easiest place to put it on. Of course, we need to put our damper, or our sorry, lower fork leg bushing on too. Bottoming cone, the, um, we're going to assemble the cartridge here with our spacer. He's going to go in from this side, sit in the bottom and cone. And this whole stack is going to sit inside the fork leg. We're going to grab a little bit of grease just to make this guy pop into position a bit more easily. And likewise, we're gonna put a tiny bit of grease on this O-ring, just so that when we tighten it, it goes in. So now I'm just going to start this by hand. That was a bit loud.
putting the cartridge tool in here. So I can be thread holding it while I thread the bottom plug in. And at this point, it's going to set him on there. Tighten the cartridge with the Motion Pro tool. I just have the breaker bar resting against my hip as a counter stay. Snug him down. So at this point now, we're ready to insert the slider bushing, which we have to do after the chrome leg is in. So we're going to warm up the um, fork tube just to help it get back in. Anytime you're using a flame like this, you know, most shops or most uh, mechanics will tell you to always use a heat gun. I find flames to be just a lot more effective, but you always have to use them right. And one of the main things is you never let the actual burning part of the flame come in direct contact with the surface that you're heating if there's any kind of finish on it any kind of paint powder coat anything like that make sure that the flame is over before it reaches the workpiece and you can see that a flame ends about here and the workpiece is here so that's making sure that i never scorch the surface of the workpiece and it's giving me nice even heat because i'm rotating the workpiece the whole time probably good so we have our bushing we have our slider bushing it's nice and clean he's gonna go in the um, the protective washer that holds him in place goes in and the sharp edges of the washer face up we're gonna grab our drift to push him into place with a rubber mallet this is gonna be just a bit loud Now you can see that that has driven those parts down flush. We will do the same thing now with the fork seal. Fork seal goes in with the open end of the spring seal down. Fork seals in, the ubiquitous show a clip. Goes in, and we can use anything we want to tap them down with. Here, I'll just use the uh, clicks into place nicely, and then. We don't even need a tool for this. The dust seal just presses down under light finger pressure. So at this point, the leg is back together. We have the top of the damper rod here. I'm gonna go ahead and put the, um, put the lock nut on the damper rod because it makes it a lot easier to handle. And then it's time to put some oil in. So we're gonna come over here, grab our five weight Bell Ray oil. And we have a, um, we have a specification of 160 uh, millimeters below the surface. 
Um, so we're just gonna, we can leave him in there. We're just gonna go ahead and, and pour oil in. Now one thing you always have to watch out for, because of the way this cartridge is designed, when you go to lift the damper rod up, pressure in the damper rod from the uh, from the rebound valve, because this is the rebound stroke when you lift it up, you're going to get oil shooting out of that in a geyser. So temporarily, we're just going to put the cap on there to keep that out. We're going to cycle this. Oop, it's still leaking out of our... So now I can feel that the uh, damper chamber is full. Because there's a lot of resistance when I'm lifting that. By the way, at this point you can feel, when you slide the fork tube down, you can feel that bottoming effect. It slides down and then it oozes down that last inch or so. So, it sounds like the damper chamber is full. I'm going to take this guy back off so that we can... set our oil level. For setting the oil level, I decided we have one of the most expensive oil level setters ever. It's my depth gauge, set at 160 millimeters. We're going to need a lot more oil to get to 160. You don't want to lift the fork up too much because the damper rod is what limits the stroke. And so by lifting the fork tube up, you'll actually lift it past the seals. Um, I can see our oil level there. We're not quite at our magic number yet, but we're very close. There we are. Tiny bit of oil on the bottom of that. So at this point, we're just ready to put the spring back on. You can see as I'm lifting it, you can see the, uh, the oil squirting out the top damper rod there. We're going to put the spring and the valve in there. Probably could have done that before. It might have prevented a little bit of that flow, but it wasn't really a problem. Throw the tube in there. And at this point we just have spring, which of course is a different spring that we're using because we're assembling this for an R100GS. And we're going to stop for just a second while I go and find the steel washer. It's probably lying in the parts washer somewhere, so let me come back in a minute. Hang on. I found the washer. It was sitting over with the DRZ springs. So, at this point we're going to just pull the damper rod up.
enough to just hold it under here. And then what I what I do here you can you can use the spring and crank the spring down whatever tool you're using, whatever wrench or or whatever, and um, and use that as a way to get nice exposed um, uh, threads on top to screw in on. You'll see we'll do the same thing with the wrench on the lock nut in a minute. We're going to bring him down. And my, the pliers are underneath the lock nut. All they're doing is prying up on it lightly. Okay, so I'll pull him out. And that would be good, if, except the lock nut's not tight. So we're going to take a 17, do the same thing we did just a minute ago, except we're going to put him on the lock nut. If he goes on right, here we go. And we're gonna do the same thing. We're just gonna crank the spring so the spring is actually holding that guy up. Then we can use the wrenches to lock the lock nut against the cap. And that's all it takes. Wind the spring down to free the wrench. Square everything up. We can reach over and just get a tiny bit of grease again for this O-ring. At this point, we can pull our fork leg up. And there is a completely assembled DRZ400 fork with a shortened spring for the R100GS, a travel spacer, and some changes that were made to the, um, to the compression rebound stacks. I think we're done.